So you've watched a bunch of budgeting videos, you have done your research, you have a game plan, you know you can do this, and you're ready to start. That's great. So what's next? Stick around and I will give you some tips on how to get started successfully. to you today about getting started on your budgeting journey specifically how I got started on my budgeting journey and some things that I ran into that were <laughs> that kind of messed me up but other things that I think I did well and I always am a big fan of like learning from your mistakes and so if someone else can learn from my mistakes why not so going into this I think one thing that I did right was making sure that I wasn't trying to keep up with the Joneses so do not wait to start your budgeting journey just because you don't have the binders or the pretty envelopes or the perfect planner or you know the labels or whatever don't think that you have to wait because you don't have these things or don't think that you need to now spend so much money on these things just to get started when i got started i went around my house and found just regular envelopes <laughs> for example this was one of the envelopes that I used when I first started budgeting. I still use this one for my groceries. It was so bad that I was using two different size envelopes and I just got like a Sharpie and some highlighters. They looked awful, but they did the job. So I upgraded to this binder, but I didn't upgrade to this binder until I budgeted for this binder. If you watch cash stuffing videos, I have an envelope that says budgeting tools and I budgeted for it. And sometimes I would like make it work for me. So, you know, if I have like $400 of stuff, I'm like, oh, I want this and I know that it costs $20, so I'm gonna budget for that, right? And I made sure that I had the money for that instead of just like spending all willy-nilly with my card, I made sure I budgeted for it. If you don't have envelopes, you can use Ziploc bags, you can get, uh, it's not as like, I guess this also is not env environmentally friendly using envelopes, but I think Ziploc bags especially are not very environmentally friendly, but you can reuse them for other things. Or you can just get paper clips and clip off like you know have again that sheet of paper with the written groceries spending emergency and have a what is it a paper clip that you clip onto that set of money and so you get your binder don't feel like you have to wait to start your journey until you get these things and on the other hand don't think that you have to spend all this money on these things to get started the second thing that i had to do was clean up my finances i had to figure out like what all my bills looked like. I already had like an Excel sheet with stuff listed out, but it wasn't up to date. And not only that, there were like little things that I, I wasn't taking into account. So for example, I pay for iCloud storage for $2.99. I never budget that into like my monthly finances, but it's money, right? In Jamaica, we have this saying, every nickel make a moko, right? And it's it basically is the same as saying every penny counts. And when we say that, usually it's, any little bit that I have counts towards something. If I only have $20 to stuff, I have $20 to stuff, at least an envelope is getting a dollar, every nickel counts. But it also goes the other way, right? Any expense, no matter how small, should count towards your budget. Because if you're not budgeting for it, that could be an issue. So I had to go through, one of the things that I did was I got my statement, I didn't print it, but you can print it. I got my statement open on preview and I was able to like just highlight using the preview highlight function and I was able to highlight stuff and found stuff that I didn't even know that I was paying for monthly and then I also <laughs> use that time to locate where monthly charges was coming from like my Kindle Unlimited and my Seamus Plus which I did not need I finally canceled it but I didn't know where my Kindle Unlimited was coming from like where was it being paid from and I've been saying it for months like I don't know what card my Kindle Unlimited is taking? I'm like, just find out. Finally, I'll leave you with a with a funny story. So my first cash stopping, I was so excited. I got my envelopes like not neatly written out. Uh, I pulled my money. I can't remember how much I stuffed. I stuffed everything. I stuffed all the envelope. I had everything like worked out on my bills for the rest of the month. It was great. The next morning I wake up, 
and I see that my account, my like daily balance that I get sent to me is lower. I go and I realize that Coursera had charged me, it's like 49 something, $50 for like a monthly membership that I like signed up for for a class that I had not been using. Fortunately, I found $120 in my drawer because there's this job that I used to get paid cash from and I would just throw the cash. It was always $120 and I would just throw it in the thing. And then like weeks later, I would like gather up all these $120 and go um, put it in the bank. But I that got like hidden under some socks and stuff and it got missing, so it worked out. But that could have like really messed me up after I'd like zero, zeroed out myself with the bills and the cash stuffing. I would have got, had to go in there and pull it. And it would have made me really sad because it was my first cash stuffing. I was so excited. I would have felt like defeated in a way. So make sure you clean up your finances. You understand what your what bills you're paying, what things need to get canceled, what things need to be fixed. Uh, I will suggest my video here where I talk about six ways to quickly save money and that's part of like figuring out what you can cancel and what you can change up in order to be saving money. Next was to organize my account and now this looks different for everyone. For me it was setting up a savings account not necessarily a savings account, but a bank account that was meant for savings and bills, like savings, saving for my bills, and then having an account where it was solely for bills to come out of, and then having like another account that was just to move money around. So it doesn't seem like it, but this is literally an hour and a half later. I ended up having to move the car, and then I decided to just run some errands because an hour and a half is how much time the street sweeping thing is. So I decided to do some errands and the drama of running those errands, I'm literally just getting back. So where were we? Oh yeah, so these accounts were accounts that I already had. I already had my Ally Bank, I already had my Bank of America, I had already had my Capital One, but these accounts are easy to set up and I know a lot of people on YouTube who are a part of the budgeting community uses Capital One, their, I guess it's a 360 savings. I have the checking account. It's easy, I think, to set up these things online. Like I know my Capital Bank account um, and my Ally Bank because Ally doesn't have a actual place you can go into. Those two I set up online. So it should be no problem. You can also just add accounts to your thing. Like I think the Capital One 360 people have like a ton of those and it's great because their savings is really good. I think I love Ally Bank because their interest, their savings interest rate is like 0.50% right now. So that's all sorted. You're keeping track of your finances. Now it's time to figure out how you're going to set up your sinking funds and your cash envelopes. Um, and this, uh, this is another thing that's different for everyone. It depends on you and your family and your needs and your wants because some of them are just wants, right? Like dining out. It's not really a need, it's a want. I have a dine out envelope you may not. I have an Ellie envelope. You certainly won't because you don't have a dog named Ellie. Um, so you have to decide what are the things that I want to save for? What are the things that I want to budget for? And write those down. Then you have to figure out your system. Do I play by ear every week to see how much I'm going to stuff for this? For me, I base it on a percentage, but I change it up as I need. So I'll put the amount that I'm stuffing into Excel and then I'll decide it, you know, the Excel will automatically tell me this is how much would go towards this envelope, blah, blah, blah. But I might say, hey, I don't need to stuff that much for beauty. I'm only going to stuff a dollar. So I changed it up where I'm only putting a dollar into beauty. And if it told me that I need to stuff 10, now I can put that extra nine dollars for something else. And so I play around with it like that. But I like to have a starting place and going from there. You might not do that. You might say, hey, this is how much I have. You know what? This week I'm going to do 30 for this one and then 20 for this one and then five for this one. And then next week, the $5 one might get $50 because something in your week change or something in your month change, your needs are different. So set up a system, know what envelopes you're going to have, know what you want to save for and go from there. The last thing that I will say, which pertains to everything that I just said, is to be flexible. Your needs and your wants will change. It might change in two days, it might change next week, it might change next year. Be flexible. If you have an envelope and you notice that, hey, I don't really need this. I don't go to concerts, why do I have a concert envelope? 
then you can just get rid of it. It's not a big deal, right? As you go on, you'll realize more and more of what you actually really need to say for and what you don't. And so be, be flexible in knowing that you can change things easily. You can take cash out of a card. You can get an envelope and make a quick envelope with a few tools. Be flexible. Do not stay on a course that's not working for you. So essentially, sometimes things are less of a priority than you think they are, or maybe your priority has changed. Maybe in three months, you're suddenly pregnant and now you need to reconsider all of your cash stuffing and you might need to like pull funds or something. That's what it's there for. So um, have fun, you know, Financial security is just an amazing thing that I think a lot of us did not grow up with. And so I think it's great to start. I wish I had started this in college when I had my little job working coat check and I used to get all these tips that I literally would just use to go shopping. I went, like I see a lot of people on here in their 20s, some people are in college who are doing this and it's amazing to see that because they're, the earlier you start, the better, but any time is better than no time at all. So again, have fun with that. Um, you know, let me know if you're starting your journey, what are some things that you've been doing in terms of starting your journey or while you're on your journey, what you've noticed, what are things that you're like following with some rules or like, you know, just things you have in place for yourself. I hope that you guys have a wonderful day, a wonderful week, a wonderful month, a wonderful year. Until the next video, bye.